Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome here if you are new. My name is Kat and I do videos related to motherhood, lifestyle, days in the life. And today I'm here to tell you all about my birth story. If you hear any sort of noises in the background, I do have my baby right here <laughs> laying on my lap with me. So let's see if I can record this before he starts crying or before he needs a bit more of my attention. I've published a baby watch video that was the entire week of my 38th week. And my idea was that I was gonna make one for week 38, 39, 40, and then maybe every two days or something if I went overdue. But it turned out that I ended up only doing the 38 week one because this birth story actually started in the evening of that last day of that video. It's been four weeks since you called And I've been waiting here for you all along I've been waiting here for you all along We don't know what this drive is It could be the drive we do before <laughs> giving birth Did you go? I wonder if you found what you're looking for Wonder if you found what you're looking for So there was the 31st of August at 38 plus 6 weeks. So in the evening we ended up going to the hospital because I was feeling reduced fetal movements. So I called the midwives and they asked me to go in so they could do some monitoring on the belly with those bands where they do one for the baby's heart rate Hello, you're laughing. and one to measure contractions. So we went in, we did that. The baby was moving it's weird saying the baby because he's obviously here. <laughs> so he was moving and the monitor was picking his movements up, but I was still not feeling much. But they told me everything was okay, his heart rate was normal and everything was fine. Then they asked me if I wanted them to check to see if I was dilated. So I said yes and they did an examination, which back then I remember thinking was super painful, the examination they were making. Obviously later on when I started having contractions I realized that that kind of pain was nothing. So the midwife did an examination and she told me I was between two and a half and three centimeters dilated and they consider active labor when you are from four onwards. But at the same time she couldn't tell me if it was gonna happen soon or if it was still gonna take a week. She said it could still vary and the fact that I was already a little bit dilated didn't really mean anything as of that moment. After being reassured that the baby was okay, we went back home. We live around 40 to 45 minutes drive away from the hospital. So we were in the car and like 10 minutes into the drive, I started having contractions, really painful contractions. I had been having Braxton Hicks for a while and those definitely felt different. They were more regular. They were a little bit more painful, but still I wasn't sure if they were actually contractions or Braxton Hicks. But I did get one of those apps that uh, times the contractions and I was timing them in the car. And the whole drive home, from that moment onwards, they were still coming. And at that time they were about six, seven minutes apart from each other. When we got back home, like an hour after that, they were still consistent and they were very painful. So I decided to call back to the hospital and tell them I just been there, but now I'm having contractions. They told me because they were still six, seven minutes apart from each other and the intervals were not that consistent, that there was no need to go back in, but to call them if at some point they became either too strong to bear or if they became three minutes apart from each other to call them. So the whole evening I was here, I was sat on the birthing ball, I was really uncomfortable, the contractions were really painful. Eventually I tried going to bed but I couldn't really fall asleep because they were so painful and laying down wasn't helping. But somehow around half two in the morning they just stopped out of nowhere. I had one and then I didn't have any more. So I ended up managing to grab a little bit of sleep. And I believe around 7 a.m. they started again, very spaced out, like every 15 to 20 minutes I would have one, which was really weird because the previous evening they were already at five, six, seven minutes apart. So the whole morning from 7 a.m. onwards I was feeling them, but they were very spaced out. I managed to have breakfast, I was walking around the house, doing a couple of things. Every time I would have a contraction I would stop and have to have it. There's even footage of me trying to feed the dogs and then I had to stop because I had a contraction. But they were spaced out, so I was like, okay, I don't know what's going on. I was very confused. I wasn't sure if I was going into labor or, or even if these were just Braxton Hicks, because obviously I didn't really have anything to compare them to. Then around 
2 p.m. This was the weirdest thing. I went upstairs to the bedroom and I believe I was gonna get changed because up until now I was still in my pajamas because I wasn't feeling great and I wasn't sure if I was gonna go back to sleep. I was very tired. I wanted to go back to sleep. So I was kind of waiting to see if the contractions would just go away so I could grab some more sleep. But at around 2 p.m. I was just gonna get changed. So I was sitting in the toilet and literally out of nowhere, the contractions went from being every 15 to 20 minutes apart to being three minutes apart. And I was sitting there and it was so painful and they were coming so quick, or at least I thought back then. And I just remember started crying because I couldn't get out of the toilet. So I felt like I was stuck there. <laughs> oh, such drama. So I ended up calling Josh. He was downstairs in his office in a meeting and we had this code word that we had previously agreed that I would only use for this situation. Like if something was wrong or if I thought I was going into labor or if my water broke or something, I would just say that code word and he would know, even being in a meeting, that he needed to stop the work straight away and come to me. I used that code word and I tried calling him from upstairs but he wasn't listening because obviously he was in a meeting. So I ended up just broadcasting through our Google Home systems and I used my phone. The code word was tuna, yes, the fish, because I hate tuna, so it's always a bit funny that our emergency things are always related to tuna. Anyway, I broadcasted that, and there's this footage of our hallway camera of Josh running upstairs after hearing the broadcast. Broadcast from cat, tuna. He got up there, I told him I'm having really strong contractions, they are being really quick, I was monitoring them on the app on the phone and I was freaking out obviously and he helped me getting out of the toilet and then the contractions kept being every three minutes so I called back to the hospital to the midwives, I told them and at that point the contractions actually got so strong that when I was having one I could no longer talk through them. So Josh was actually the one talking on the phone with them and telling them what was going on. Obviously they told us come in, let's get you checked out, let's see what this is. So we went in, another 45 minute drive and and oh my god, the drive was so bad, having contractions in the car is the worst feeling ever. They are so painful. Every little bump on the road makes them a hundred times worse. If you've had contractions in the car, you know what I'm talking about. Eventually we got there, but I just remember being in the car. I was holding a plastic bag because they were so painful that I was so certain that I was going to throw up. I didn't, but it felt like I was going to. Josh was holding my hand the entire time, so he was driving with one hand, holding my hand with the other, and he was as well looking at the time on the car watch, so he knew when the next one was coming. By then, they were every two minutes, like on the dot. Every two minutes, bam, every two minutes, bam. And they were lasting around 50 to 60 seconds, so a minute at it every time. They were so strong. I couldn't talk. I felt like I was gonna be sick. By the time we got there, just walking from the car to inside the hospital, I had like two contractions on the car park. I had to stop walking. Then inside, when we were waiting in the intercom for them to open the door, I had another one. Then at the front desk, I had another one. So. Every few steps I was having to stop walking, try and focus on my breathing and go through the contraction. Josh was doing most of the talk with everyone at that point, as you can imagine. They got me admitted to triage to check and I was five centimeters dilated. So obviously they said, okay, you are in labor, let's get you admitted, let's get you a room. So we got given a room straight away, a really nice room. There was some wood lighting going on and they had some battery operated candles as well that Josh immediately spread it around the room. And the machinery behind the bed, it was like hidden inside cupboards. So obviously the whole room was designed to make you feel a little bit more comfortable and take the hospital vibe a little bit away. As soon as I got to the room, first thing I did was ask for the epidural. The contractions were so bad, I had to wait around 45 minutes for the anesthesiologist to arrive and the contractions were so bad at that point. I was obviously no longer timing them, but they were super quick, I would say probably every minute or so, or minute and a half and it's still lasting for a minute and they were so, so strong. I was already getting exhausted from feeling those contractions. How are you feeling? So I honestly don't know how people go the whole labor without an epidural and having to feel the contractions the whole way through. Anyway, getting the epidural was challenging. It was so painful. They asked me to roll over at the edge of the bed and obviously I had my big bump in the way. And every time there was a contraction, I couldn't move. So I was there with my arms and legs dangling off the edge of the bed, all folded over my bump. And the contractions were so painful and I would just have to stay there. And... Also getting the epidural was very painful. It felt a little bit like electric shocks going through my spine, like up and down, like whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. 
but only for a few seconds I think when they first connected the things and that was one out of the two times where I actually cried during labor well three if you consider when he was born but that's after labor I held myself together pretty well I was quite proud of myself because I'm a very crying baby everything makes me cry I have very low tolerance to pain and pain does make me cry I'm the typical person that stubs the toe in the corner of a furniture and cries out of pain so I was a bit scared of going into labor and just crying the whole time and basically lose control over myself so I was very proud that I managed to not do that and there was only two moments where I cried one of them was when the epidural first got installed in my back takes around an hour for the epidural to kick in still feeling the contraction so painful I was so ready for it to finally kick in and then it finally did and what a bliss it was I was very surprised with the way the epidural worked in my mind it would make me numb from like the waist down but no I could still feel my legs perfectly and my arms and above the bump and everything I could feel everything except literally my abdomen and where the contractions were being and I had the two bands again around my belly one for the baby's heart rate one for the contraction so the screen was showing me that I was having contractions but I couldn't feel anything and it was amazing at that point I was just there in the room me Josh and the midwife and just chit-chatting away and passing the time they explained to me how the whole process worked and they they said that they would do a vaginal examination every four hours and that they were hoping for two centimeters dilated of progression every four hours so I was a five when I first got admitted four hours later they were expecting a seven and I was like okay cool four hours later she does the examination and I was a six they said they could break my waters for me if I wanted but everything was still progressing normally and they weren't worried baby heart's rate was fine it had only been four hours it was my first baby as well which means the labor is usually a bit longer so they were perfectly fine with it they said I'm happy to wait another four hours and we can see what happens four hours from now if you're still progressing slowly or you might just pick it back up so I was like okay cool let's wait and then we were on the second four hour period of waiting at some point during those four hours the epidural started failing so I was laying in bed and I started feeling on my left side initially it was just a little bit of a discomfort so I thought maybe I just need to change position in the bed and then it started being stronger and stronger and slowly I realized that I was actually feeling the contractions I told the midwife she told me to lay on my left side she said because the epidural is basically a liquid that sometimes the body just needs to be in a different position to help the liquid spread something like that and she said to lay on my left for half an hour and see how it goes and if it was still painful after half an hour they would get the anesthesiologist back in half an hour later it was even more painful because basically the epidural had been wearing off that entire time so slowly it was getting more and more painful the anesthesiologist came in they checked the tube on my back to make sure everything was connected to the correct place and nothing had moved or anything they said everything was fine and they offered to give me a manual top-up of the epidural which was just a syringe that they injected directly into the tube he did that and took around half an hour for it to kick in and then pure bliss once again until it stopped working around two hours later it stopped working again on the left side it slowly got more and more painful with each contraction they called the anesthesiologist again they checked the tube again said it was in the correct place they were doing all these checks they had this cold cube check I'm not gonna go into details but they were basically checking the rest of my body and making sure that some of the epidural was working and the conclusion was that it was because I couldn't feel anything on the, on the right and now I had half of my legs numb because of the manual top-up it basically just extended the length of the epidural in my body so they were doing all these tests the epidural was working except on that little area on the left they offered to give me another manual top-up but they suggested to give me only half of the dosage because otherwise the actual labor and the pushing and everything would be really difficult because I wouldn't have much feeling at all half an hour later that half dosage should have kicked in but it never kicked in at all so when the anesthesiologist came back in the room to check how I was doing I was in even more pain because obviously labor was progressing so the contractions were getting stronger and they were getting closer to each other I then asked them can you please 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 give me the second half of that dosage but I was like if it's safe for everyone for me and the baby and it's just gonna make it difficult I'd rather endure with that later and just have a more difficult pushing because I don't know problem for future self by then I was in so much pain they gave me the second half of the epidural the midwife agreed that it was the best thing to do because I was getting really uncomfortable and it was getting really painful and she said you still need to push so you should still be comfortable the midwife recommended that I got the second dose I did half an hour later the anesthesiologist came back in the room to check how I was doing and he hadn't kicked in so that second manual top-up that I received in two halves it didn't kick in 
at all. I was in so much pain. That was the second time that I cried, was having those contractions at the very end. They were so painful. They were so quick. I was so numb. I was numb all the way to my toes, which I knew was gonna happen. But so I couldn't move. I couldn't change position in bed which meant I was very uncomfortable, the contractions were very strong and I couldn't even position my body in a position that I could try and see if it make it better. Josh and the midwife were trying to rotate me, but my legs felt so heavy and my bum was completely numb, so it was really weird to, to try and sit down and try and rotate. So at some point I remember I was just sat on the bed with their help and I was just bent over the bump and holding on to something. I think I was holding on to the mattress of the bed actually. And the contractions were so strong and it was like for a second I couldn't hold it anymore and I cried for a little bit, but somehow I managed to make myself stop. That was one of my biggest fears was that I would start crying and then I wouldn't be able to stop, but somehow I managed to stop. The anesthesiologist, however, said there was nothing else they could do. They couldn't give me any more top-ups because as each top-up extended the part of the body that the epidural affects, they said it extends both down and up. If they gave me another top-up, it would reach my lungs, which means I wouldn't be able to breathe. Obviously not good. I asked what was going on and they said that unfortunately around 1 in 10 epidurals don't work 100% and no one knows why, but that I was the 1 in 10. It was me. Hello! And so there was nothing else they could do regarding the epidural and I would have to go the rest of labor without. At that point it had been around three hours since the last checkup and the midwife said, how about I just check you now because you are in so much pain, your contractions are so strong and you are so uncomfortable that maybe you already progressed. So let's have a look. So she checked me at three hours instead of four. Remember that on the previous checkup I was at six centimeters and when she checked I was at nine centimeters. So in three hours I progressed the remaining three centimeters. I was now fully dilated, 100% defaced and she said, you're ready. Then she told me that the correct procedure for when you have an epidural, even though mine was a little bit failed, was to wait an hour after reaching the 9 centimeters. So we waited an hour, it's just to allow the baby to go a little bit further down, which will make the pushing easier when you have an epidural. That last hour, I was still feeling the contractions, but it was like out of the sudden, I wasn't as much focused on that. I was more terrified of what was going to come and the pushing and obviously I don't know, I didn't know what I was doing, I didn't know how to push and I couldn't feel anything, I couldn't move my body, I was very very scared of what was going to happen after. So an hour later, I just remember the midwife walked back in the room, she went to have a little coffee before, <laughs> she just walked in and said, right let's have a baby. <laughs> I was so scared. She then explained to me how to push and she tried guiding me on which part of the body to push, which was difficult because I couldn't feel any. The only thing I could feel was my belly, so basically my pushing was just squeezing my belly as hard as I could, but she told me from looking down there that I was pushing. I then pushed for one hour and 45 minutes. Push. Push.
you go. Oh my god. During those 1 hour and 45 minutes at some point his heart rate dropped and they told me that I had one more contraction to push and that if he didn't come out with that contraction they would have to press this button on the wall and they were literally telling me if I have to press this button there will be an alarm going on outside the door lots of people will burst in, lots of doctors and things don't freak out, I know it's, it can get very scary because it's a lot of people in one go but try and focus on us and don't freak out I gave it my absolute maximum I thought I was gonna burst a vein in my head from pushing so hard because obviously I didn't want anything bad to happen to him so I pushed and I pushed and I pushed and he didn't come out so they had to click that button and then literally, I don't know, seven or eight people walked in the room the midwife there was coaching me through the pushing and doing all the push 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 she literally told me on the next contraction you're gonna push as hard as you can and when you think you don't have anything else to give in you, you give some more so when that contraction came and I started pushing, holding the back of my legs and I was pushing as hard as I could, like squeezing that belly as hard as I could and then out of nowhere I feel a poof, like a bubble bursting and my belly going down and apparently that was this little head coming through <laughs> I had a second degree tear in four different places I was bleeding a lot and they couldn't figure out where the bleeding was coming from so they had to give me this other medication, another injection they gave that to me on my IV I believe that was to help stop the bleed then they did the stitching, took them over an hour to stitch me up so he came in like a wrecking ball and then when they weighed all the absorbent pads and everything where the blood goes to they reached the conclusion that I lost over a liter of blood we needed to stay in the ward for at least 12 hours because of my epidural, that's just normal procedure and we could be discharged after I've done a certain amount of pee which I did straight away and after little baby boy had both peed and pooed and then they asked if we wanted to go home or if we wanted to stay overnight we decided to go home so still in the same day where he was born at around 6pm that's when we left the hospital Yes, we left the hospital, did we? Did we, leave the, did we leave the hospital? We left the hospital and we came home and everything was well, supposedly but on day 3 postpartum we went to a midwife's appointment and when they checked me down there they told me I needed to go back to the hospital because it looked like my stitches were infected went back to the hospital and when they checked they said that not only I had an infection but I had quite a bad and severe infection they told me so they said I had to be admitted for about 24 hours so they could keep me under control and make sure the infection wasn't getting any worse they did some more tests I got done an x-ray because they wanted to make sure that no cotton swabs or anything, nothing had been left inside and then when the actual doctor came to do their evaluation they told me, I don't know what they told you but it looks like you're gonna be here for a few days and I was like, what? how is this possible? so we got moved to the ward again I ended up being there for four days I did nine rounds of IV antibiotics I was diagnosed with really strong anemia due to the blood loss that I had during labor I was in there for four days with Josh and this little one they were there the whole time with me and it was very difficult being in that little compartment of the, of the room I was trying to nurse him and I was trying to pump and I couldn't really go anywhere because every four hours they were coming in to hook me up to the IV to get another round of antibiotics and the antibiotics weren't really going in so I had to have my hand out the bed to help with the angle they had to keep doing blood tests on me as well but they couldn't find my veins they kept stabbing my arms and my hands the IV thingy that you have at the back of your hand it was blocked so several times they had to reposition it again they kept stabbing the back of my hands to position them the whole thing was hell and I felt so guilty for having this perfect beautiful one week old baby in there with me it should be out enjoying sunshine and walks and instead he was stuck inside the hospital after four days I finally got discharged with antibiotics to take home and iron pills increased to twice a day instead of just one and that was it after four days we came home and we started the parenthood journey once again the <laughs> second time we were starting at home and I could go into more detail about that second part the infection and how then the infection wasn't really going away and I had to go to several appointments after 
and going back to the hospital several times and got several exams done. I could go into detail into all of that, but this video is already incredibly long. I don't want to make it any longer, but it was rough. I felt like compared to what came in the postpartum, labor itself was nothing special. It was like 12 hours. Yes, the contractions hurt a lot. And yes, I was very traumatized of the epidural not really working. And it does scare me for future babies. Will the epidural just not work on me at all? At the same time, it was, it was such a straightforward process. Like you go in, you wait a few hours, you have a baby, you go home. It's such a straightforward process. And if I hadn't had all these complications on the postpartum, he would have been brilliant. But I did have all these complications. And I feel like that's not something that people talk about enough, is what comes after. And they talk about the sleep deprivation and all of that, but no one talks about the complications that can actually happen physically to your body, besides the mental challenging load. This was my story, and the story of how our first son came into the world on the 2nd of September 2023 at 1.56am. And how he's just the most beautiful, gorgeous, handsome little man in the whole world. Thank you so much for watching. If you are still here at the end of this very, very long video, I really do appreciate you. Don't forget to leave a like on the video and leave me a comment if you watched all the way until now. Leave me a pregnancy emoji if you're still here at this point, so I know you watched all the way till the end. And subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my future uploads and all the little cute content involving the best guy in the world. And I'll see you very soon here on the channel with another video. Bye!